Tell us what made you want to play this part. Yeah, um, it came across my desk about six years ago. Um, I immediately wanted to do it. I didn't know about Ron Lear, but I didn't know about Dallas, about Byers Clubs. And I remember, I remember thinking that uh, one, I was like, boy, this, this is a, this is an incredible story about, about this man, about this man's life uh, that I knew nothing about. And I remember saying, boy, even if this was fiction, this would be worth telling. And then the fact that it was not fiction, that it was based on his life and true events, made it more important, uh, and, and, and gave me a lot more incentive to have to do it. Um, I love the original sort of anarchic way that it dealt with a very dramatic and heartfelt subject, HIV, and uh, not only in 86, but with this guy's life and a lot of others. Um, one, he was heterosexual. I thought that was interesting from, the, from a heterosexual point of view. Two, he was a son of a bitch the whole way through. He was a self-serving, self-preserving businessman, hustling son of a bitch. And I thought, and I was real happy that it never got sentimental. Mm -hmm. And I felt, and I felt like, boy, what a challenge this could be to pull off the truth and the heart, but also the blasphemous humor, because it was a real guy on the page. Um, so I thought that was an original way to deal with this subject matter. And I remember early on saying, you know what? If this does, if this was, if this had been a larger budget film. If this had been a Hollywood studio film, they would have rewrote Act 3, and Ron Woodruff would have, at the Act 3 turn, 2 to 3, would have had to come and tell everyone, I'm sorry for my bigoted, homophobic ways. I, you know, what have I become? I'm sorry. You, the bow would have come out. <laughs> and the version of the bourgeois blues would have started to play. <laughs> for this guy's life, because he was not that guy. He was just was not that guy. And I remember... Say, you know what, if, we, if, we, if, we, if you keep him the son of a bitch, the, the humanity will reveal itself. If, if you keep him the businessman, the crusader will reveal itself. And we didn't know. I mean, there were many times, um, not during shooting, because not many people talked to me, and I didn't talk to many people then, but there were many times I heard, and I'm sure it's why I was passed off for 20 years, but this, this guy's not sympathetic. And I remember, I'm glad I felt this way, but my immediate response was, that's not my job to make him sympathetic. Mm -hmm. Empathetic. He's a real guy. You can understand that, hey, that's, that's, a, that's, a real, that's a real guy. He's not playing an attitude. That's who he is. And if you don't like who he is and his politics from when, you, when you first meet him, you go like, I know people like that. You go, man, they didn't know better. Mm -hmm. You know, there was ignorance at that, at that time. There's a lot of people still that way. So I just saw him as a real human. And I remember saying, you know what, McKay, just hang your hat on the humanity of this guy. Not the morality, but the, the reality and the humanity of this guy and stick to it. And trust that that humanity will come out. And uh, so, you know, I, I don't have the best relationship with sentimentality. Um, and sometimes I like it, and it's got its place, but other times I think it's, it's force-fed a little bit for my taste. Um, so it was a way to deal with, with the, a really dramatic and heartfelt subject matter with a really original anarchic guy. And, you know, we knew this thing. You know, you, you just, you know, the post you get one liner, you know you got, you got something that's of import, something that is probably going to be good medicine for you to go see. But what you don't know, but I think we did pull off, which was sort of a coup, is that how entertaining it is. Um, and how, and in my experience of watching it with people, the first act, because people know the subject matter, they're a little afraid to laugh. Mm -hmm. So you're like, I can't laugh in this movie right now. <laughs> and then people start to do something, you go, I can laugh. And it's such a, it's a really good example of how humor reveals such humanity. That humor shows such sincerity. And almost, um, I mean, there's so many scenes in this that could have been heavily dramatic. And could have been just as true. I mean, Ron... You know, comes home after the dinner with Eve Sachs. How many people have seen it? He comes home from the dinner with Eve Sachs, <laughs> and, he, and, he, and he comes home and he, and he masturbates. And that could have been tears rolling down face. I can't have sex with anyone. But yet, he's looking at pictures of hot rod women, and then he sees the Mark Bolin picture. <laughs> the scene where um, he says, Who's the lady in that clinic? 
She has AIDS, and then they go to the bathroom and hook up. Yeah. That, we, that was a very touchy scene. That came up because when we were listening to t um, tapes, and I was listening to tapes of Ron Wood, there was always a woman in the background. And the way he talked to her, you could tell they were hooking up. And, and I went to John Mark, and I was like, look, he had HIV, but it, it, he was still having sex. And we were like, oh, I don't know how to do that. And it would be, that's like really touchy. Two people with HIV, I don't know how we do that. Well, one day we show up to work, and John Mark goes, goes to we'll walk in there, call the secretary over, and ask who it is. And then you know, I think I'll go back in the bathroom. And so we, we shot it. Well, if you look at the scene, it's not icky at all. It's almost... One, it's a little bit life-affirming. It's sad, but it, it cuts outside to the staff listening <laughs> to the sounds, and, it, and it's one of the funniest scenes in the movie. Um, so, again, he, he, the director, did a lot of things with how he dealt with scenes that could have been very heavy-handed, but yet the humor showed the humanity in them. And that, that, was, that was a lot of Jean-Marc. Okay, why don't we take a look at another clip from Dallas Bias Club, actually? 